Hello, this is a lesson for your GoMath fourth grade workbook lesson 5.6. We are in chapter five, we're talking about factors, multiples, and patterns. And this is the very last lesson in this chapter in regards to patterns, defining patterns, um, recognizing patterns, and things of that nature. Let's review factors and multiples before we get started. Let's do a quick review here of what is a factor and what is a multiple. If you were in my class, we say factors, we have a song that we sing, and we say, the factors are the rainbow, the multiples are the list. And when we do that, that helps us remember that when we're talking about factors, we're making a rainbow. And so when we make the rainbow, we are always, 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 every single number in the whole wide world has the same first factor. It is. Hopefully, if you're in my class, you said one. Because F, when we're, we're listing the factors of seven, because this question wants us to come down here and find these, find which of these numbers are factors of seven. And so we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a list here. Every single factor in the whole wide world has the same first number. It is one. One. Every single number in the whole wide world has the same last factor. It is itself. In this case, itself is seven. Every single number in the whole wide world, we always try two next. Two is not going to work here because this number is not even. This number is odd, so two is not going to work. Three, when, we try, when we're trying factors, we say three, six, nine, twelve. Three, six, nine. We notice here that we've missed the seven. Three is not a factor. Same for four, five, and six. And once we draw our rainbow, when we get back to the first number on the back side of our rainbow is seven. That means this number only has two factors, meaning that this number is prime. And we will talk about that more in just a second when we get into the poster section of our slide deck. So. Because of these things, we can answer the question, is the number, so when it says the number, you're going to put this number here, is 1 a factor of 7? You don't have to do a lot of thinking because you've already done that. Yes, it is. Is 2 a factor of 7? No. Is 7 a factor of 7? Yes. Is 14 a factor of 7? No. Here is our numbers, 1 and 7, that's all it is. We know these are not factors. The reason they put these like this, the reason they do these numbers this way, is to try to trip you up. They're trying to trick you and say, ooh, factor, multiple, these things are very similar, and we're going to give you the same exact numbers and the same exact question, just changing this one word. If you will remember our little song, the factors are the rainbow, the multiples are the list, if you will remember our little song, that will help you know, okay, now I need to list multiples of 7. And when I list multiples of 7, I start with 7. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we're listing multiples. This is a very brief review of chapter 5 in its entirety, okay? 21, 28, 35, 42... 49. Must we go on? Do we need to go on? We could go on forever. We could go on forever and ever and ever and ever. But we don't have to do that because we know that 42 is the last question, they're, the last number they're asking us about. So we'll go to 42 and we'll stop. So is the number, again, put the number in that spot, a multiple the multiples are the list. Is 1 a multiple of 7? No. Is 2 a multiple of 7? No. Is 7 a multiple of 7? Yes. 14? Yes. Mrs. McGinnis, how are you going so fast? Because I already made my list. I did that ahead of time, and now I don't have to go back through that again. 15, 21, 29, all of those there in my list. 
so I don't have to go back through that and think about that again, okay? The, this is, like I said, a very brief review of factors and multiples, which as we work on this pattern business will come in handy. So our goal for this lesson, our goal for this lesson is, actually, let's talk about our math toolbox first. If you're in my class, you know that as I'm teaching fourth grade math, I am simply putting strategies into your math toolbox here. We started this chapter by modeling factors using arrays. Then we started listing them using the rainbow, listing multiples in the list. Now we are going to define and follow patterns. Okay, here are our goals. Can you find all of the factor pairs for the whole numbers one through 100? Can you tell me if a number is a factor of a given whole number from one to 100? Can you tell me if your answer is reasonable? Can you list multiples of whole numbers? And can you create a number or shape pattern when given a specific rule? That is our heart's desire today, to create numbers or patterns when given a specific rule. Poster section, these are our posters. We talk about these every single day. If you can understand that three times four, these two numbers are factors, equals 12. This is your product, you've known that for years. It's also known as a multiple. So, three and four, 12 is in the multiple list of three, and 12 is in the multiple list of four. If you will memorize this pattern, this poster, you'll be good to go. Next, prime numbers. A prime number is simply has two factors, one and myself. The number five says, my factors, easy. It's one and me, that's it. Prime equals one and me, that's it. That's what a prime number is. If your number's not prime, so let's say number four, which has the factors of one and four, and then two and two, that number is called composite. Any number that's not prime is composite. Okay, we are in your Go Math fourth grade chapter five workbook, page 311. And if you were in class, we would be doing table practice, but we will work with each other virtually. Okay, here we go. Daryl is making a pattern for a quilt. The pattern shows 40 squares. Every fourth square is blue, so there's our pattern, right? Every fourth square is blue. How many blue squares are in the pattern? Now, here is the, here is the kicker right here. Here is our introduction. Here we are. Our essential question is, how can you make and describe patterns? In order to make and describe patterns, you have to know that a pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects. Each number or object in the pattern is called a term. That's the new, that's the big new vocabulary word here, term. So, shade the squares that are blue. He's making a pattern, the pattern shows 40 squares every fourth square. So, four, eight, do you know? We're listing multiples here. Four, eight, 12, 16. That's all you have to do to list multiples. Just count up however many. 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Which squares are blue? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. You're listing the multiples of four because that's how the pattern landed. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh oh, I messed up something. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Oh, because I'm supposed to go to 30. I'm supposed to go to 40. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 36. Whoopsie. 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 
blue squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten blue squares. Each number in the list is called a term. The rule to this pattern is plus four. So in each pattern, you're going to have a term, which is each number. You're going to have a rule, which is whatever they're telling you, however they're telling you to make the pattern. And then you're always going to have a starting place. This particular a starting mark, this particular um, question didn't really give us a starting mark. So we knew we were starting with one. Okay, so describe another number pattern in Daryl's quilt. Um, all these numbers are even, right? Which means they're all divisible by two. Um, the one's place repeats itself. Four, eight, two, six, zero. Four, eight, two, six, zero. In the one's place, lots of different patterns that you will find here. The pattern, you're going to have three things. The terms, how many terms do they want? What is the rule? And where do you start? So you're going to have all the, oh, I can leave that there. I wondered if that would work out. You can leave all of that like that. Okie dokie. All right. So the rule for, okay, we're on page 312 now. Find and describe a pattern. The rule for the pattern is add five. The first term, oh goodness, I did that earlier today. Sorry about that. The rule for the pattern is add five. The first term in the pattern is five. So here's our per first term. We're adding five each time. Five plus 10, or five plus five is 10. 10 plus five is 15, 20, 20. Notice we're counting by fives. If I could do this correctly, goodness. Right? So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and so on. Notice, these are our terms. The rule is plus 5, and they gave us our starting mark. It's add 5, the first term in the pattern is five. So, what do you notice about the digits in the ones place? We know, we know the patterns for fives. It's either gonna be a five or a zero. We already know that. Describe the pattern using words odd and even. Every other number is odd, and then every other number is even, right? Describe the pattern using the word multiples. We have listed the multiples of five when we completed this pattern. Very, very good. Okay, moving right along, page number 312, continuing the rule. So here we go, here's our rule for the pattern is add three, subtract one. This is where you're not gonna be on the multiples that you we have been using in the past. So six plus three is nine. Subtract 1 is 8. Add 3, 8 minus 11. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to subtract 1. When you see these rules listed like this, it'll be listed like this. It'll say rule, add 3, comma, subtract 1. It'll have these rules listed like this. When you see it like this, understand that these are two separate things. Sometimes students want to do those things in one and then list the term. No, you start with your starting mark, then you do the first part of the rule, add three, write down your term, write down your answer. Subtract one, write down your answer. Add three, write down your answer. Subtract one, 10. Next, we're gonna add three, 13. Subtract one, 12. Add 3, 15. Subtract 1, 14. Add 3, 17. We could go on forever. You have to know in your pattern when they want you to stop. So, 
Again, describe another pattern in the numbers for the sake of time. Um, we're going to do that very quickly. Describe another pattern in the numbers. Odd, even, odd, even. Uh, even, odd, even, odd, I mean to say. Pretty good, yeah? All right. Uh-oh, went one too far. All right. Use the rule to write the numbers in the pattern. Here we go. Here's the rule. Here's the first term. They had it listed for you. Subtract 10. So, minus 10. 90. Minus 10. 80. Minus 10. 70. Minus 10. 60. So, your pattern is... 100, 90, 80, 70, 60. Notice in your workbook, I'm just kind of jumping around in this lesson. I'm not going straight through the whole entire thing. I'm just choosing the meat, choosing the best portion of the lesson and reviewing that with you um, kind of quickly. Okay, so here we go. A little bit more practice. Use the rule to write the numbers in the pattern. We have a starting mark, we have a rule, and they've given us a list of terms. They said how many we need to do. So, our starting mark is four. Multiply by two. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. 32 times two, 64. Here is our pattern, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. The thing I really like about drawing these little arrows with the numbers is that's showing your work. That's showing your teacher how you are doing this and what you're thinking. If you don't write it down, we don't know what you're thinking. So I love it when students show their work. Okay, rule, skip count by 6. What's the same as skip count by 6? Add 6, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 24, 24, 30, 30, 36. We're counting, whoopsie, we're counting up by 6. We're skip counting by 6. 12, 18, 6. 18 plus 6, sorry, 24 plus 6, 30 plus 6 gets us to 36. We have a starting mark. Our starting mark was 12. We have a rule. Our rule is skip count by 6. We have a term. The, term is, the terms here are listed how many terms they want, okay? And that brings us to our test question, which is just specific for my class. So, thank you for joining us. For this review of your fourth grade Go Math workbook, lesson 5.6, if you have questions, please drop a question in the comment. Go straight to my email. If you have other fourth grade needs, please feel free to check out the rest of my channel. In the playlists, there are different um, Go Math, specific Go Math chapter um, uh, lessons. And then there are other more vague, more broad um content reviews as well. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.